I know you were looking to begin in chapter four, but before we begin chapter four, we need to go over what we did in chapter two and in chapter three. So QuickBooks have a default. QuickBooks have default accounts. As you've seen in chapters two and three, QuickBooks identifies certain accounts as system default accounts. These accounts are used to identify a transaction recorded in the QuickBooks window. When you deal with vendors, you have vendor transactions, and there are they are called account payable accounts, and they're recorded in the interbills window. When you have customers, customer transactions are account receivable accounts, and they are recorded in the create invoice windows. When QuickBook looks for an account, it looks for the account type which is a number, not the account name. When we have vendor activities, what happens is you receive a bill and say their bill is from Computer Town for $3,600. QuickBooks will use account type 2010, which is an accounts payable account, and a Pacific account, which is the cost of computers, uh, and this may be $1,825. QuickBook does the rest of the accounting from this point on. Again, when QuickBooks looks for an account, it's looking for the account type, not the name. So with customers, you're dealing with customer activities. For example, you provide 16 hours of design services to Ms. Sally Fields at $30 an hour, which comes to about $480, and she's going to pay it in, in 30 days. So what happens is you create an invoice to show this customer does not pay immediately. So if the customer pays immediately, you're going to go straight to create sales. What QuickBook does, it will use a Pacific account, 1410, which is for design services, and a 1,200 accounts receivable to show the work that you have completed. And again, QuickBooks does the rest of the accounting from this point on. And that's what brings us to chapter four. Chapter four is dealing with adjusted journal entries. It's called chapter four, period and procedures, charts of account. What is in the chart of an account? It is a list of accounts a company uses as it conducts its business. These are usually Pacific accounts. For example, the cost of a computer or design services, which is 1410. It may be 1750, which is computer accumulation depreciation, utilities expense, rent expense, which may be 6400. Sometimes these accounts need to be added. Sometimes they need to be deleted. If they're an old account, of course, we need to delete them. It's, and a lot of times accounts need to be modified. They mean the account needs to be updated. So to add to the chart of account list, you, you go to the list and you click on chart of accounts. You click account. And if it's a new account, you're going to click on add new account. And then you're going to provide the, uh, that information like account number, name, type, and balance. Most of the time, you don't need to know double entry accounting to use QuickBooks. So when you write checks, receive payments, and perform many other tasks in QuickBooks, the program, unbeknownst to you, handles double entry for you. But every once in a while, QuickBooks transactions can't uh, do that. And the, uh, your only choice is moving the money around directly between accounts. And in, in the accounting world, this direct manipulation is called journal entries. Let me explain journal entries to you. For example, on December 1st, 2014, the company paid its insurance agent $2,400 for his insurance protection during the period of November the 1st, 2014 through May 31st, 2015. 
The $2,400 transaction was recorded in the, the accounting records on December 1st. But the amount, the $2,400 amount, represents six months of coverage and expense. In QuickBooks, we would assign accounts associated with insurance expense and accounts payable when we enter a bill and then we pay the bill for the entire $2,400. But by December 31st, one month of insurance coverage and costs ha have been used up or uh, they say it has expired. So the income statement for December should report just one month of insurance cost of $400. How do we get to this $400? That's your $2,400 divided by six months. And that $400 is in the account insurance expense. The balance sheet dated December 31st should report the cost of five months of the insurance coverage that has not yet been used up. The cost not yet used up is referred to as an asset, which is called prepaid insurance. The cost that is used up is referred to as the expired cost or what we call insurance expense. This means that the balance sheet dated December 31st should report five months of insurance costs or $2,000 for our 400 times uh, five months will give you the $2,000 in the asset account prepaid insurance. Since it is unlikely that the $2,400 transaction on December 31st was recorded this way, an adjusting journal, an adjusting entry will be needed at December 31st, 2014 to get the income statement and balance sheet to report this accurately. There are usually three types of adjusting journal entries. We really only deal with one uh, uh, most of the time, and the one that one is called accruals. It's used to record a revenue or expense that has not been recorded through a standard accounting transaction. But you also have what we call deferrals, and you also have estimates. In QuickBooks Chapter 4, we deal with expense accruals. Expenses are on the first line, and it is the debit. Assets are on the second line, and it is the, the credit. As you can see, 6050 advertising expense is the $300, and the 4010 is the prepaid advertising, which is $300, and that's how we keep track of it in adjusting journal entries. You will print off two trial balances in Chapter 4. Before entering your adjusting journal entries, you always print off a trial balance first. And then after entering your adjusting journal entries, you print off another trial balance or what we call an adjusted trial balance. Good luck.